and I'm just go one way. Right? That's that's the scary bit. They talk to tell them how they're going on, what's happening with the engine, how it's performing. So if it can talk one way, my cynical yeah. old policeman part yeah. of me will yeah. say, I must be able to compromise it to make it receive. You know, there must be something in there. Worst case is people are sending them out from the factory and they're compromised at source. Yeah, that's to me is is really. If I was going to do something bad today, I would compromise a server of code base. Oh. I wouldn't even worry about. I would get into the code. I'd write a line. I'd disappear for five years. Okay. So knowing that that was because there's so many million lines of it that was put in. I have something there, but I'm ready. I'll go switch, and you know the end of the world is near. It's that that is the way to think. That is what's going to be the next step. It will be inherently flawed code, and then all these assemblers will be building their assembled code and be putting it in place without really checking everything because they'll trust. They'll trust that someone said this is good code. They'll say, "Oh, great, it's good code." You know, the days of us pressing something on our phone. How many of you? Here's something. How many of you, when you go to a different country, get a carrier update on your phone that says you've got a carrier update setting? Press OK. Yeah. Mm. I tell you now, don't ever do that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you joke because this is fact, no word of a lie. I absolutely know somebody who has written an exploit that sends that message when you register on a network mm. and you install a backdoor. You are owned. Every call, every message, mm. and we've actually got within Nuix these databases from this guy that's captured, I mean, we've just done it on himself, but, so now, I never, never update your carrier settings, all right? Just a word of advice, especially if you're going to South America. So just <laughs> never, ever do it. Just don't, because you don't know, do you? It pops up, seems very legitimate. Okay, thanks. You just open your entire system. That and free Wi-Fi. Yes. Wow. That's. I mean, that's another hour long, week long conversation on its own. Yeah, man in the middle. I mean, God, if you go and sit up anywhere public, open up and say, "Here's, open up a free Wi-Fi and just sit there ripping the traffic in that." How many people's passwords you click it? Yeah, free that, access point. Yeah, well, just that, call yourself free Wi-Fi at wherever. I was, I was telling Ben, it's equally easy to hack into the wireless keyboard. You yes. see, Starbucks, you do, all you need to do is to hack in the wireless keyboard yeah. and you can have one. Yep, yeah. it's scary stuff. But, you know, we love a bit of scary, right? but that's what keeps us in the job. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to make sure, and, uh, and for me, the biggest, the biggest issues coming ahead are code. My biggest issues and worries are inside the threat, the inside the threat fact about um, the fact that, you know, there are radicalized groups that have spent time infiltrating very large organizations and they're using those very large organizations infrastructures across the world as a backbone to communicate, to activate until such time as they're ready. How do you work out that they're not working their stuff by, you know, a squiggle? Mm -hmm. So they've given their activation by a squiggle on a thing that goes straight to someone else's watch, you know, before they're activated and sleepers wake up. These are all interesting and they're like, wow, this is stuff of movies. Well, you know, guess what? Stuff is starting to, to play out that way. So it's, it's wondering how are these things, how accessible are they, but also how controllable are they? And see how many red teams have breaking in and see well, how do you respond, like say, going through the processes with my risk and how do I avert the risk, how do I respond the right way, what data do I need to collect? Like you say, the data volumes are getting so big. I wrote some <laughs> guidelines for the government many years ago on how we should do data collections. Back then it was very pioneering. I wrote about network collecting. I wouldn't even dream of doing what I would advise then now because the magnitude of data makes it you know, untenable to even continue that way. You have to profile your data. You have to understand what you're looking for. Analytics are going to be massive, absolutely massive. Having a profile data source, a hard drive that comes in that you already know the main things you're going to look at is going to give you the indicators because we're suddenly moving from that to getting answers faster. Because by getting answers faster, we stop it quicker. Yep. So that's a mental switch that the industry has to make from a response perspective. That brings to mind, you know, speaking to the corporations, they are very concerned about reporting an incident because they fear that once they report, 
the investigation process is going to prevent them from doing their business because their servers are going to be taken for mirroring and things like that. What is a way to calm this concern or what is a way to overcome this worry? Oh, wait, I mean, uh, in, in, in the US, there's mandatory breach, breach notification, right? Correct. And yes. in, in our act, Singapore... There may be. There's very likely to be. Yeah, in Singapore, it's 2017. So that's, that's the... Yeah, yeah there's, so there'll be ways to respond. Now, there'll be ways of dealing with yeah. it from a technology perspective. One of the things I would suggest, that if people have a capability of monitoring, detecting when things are happening, recording when things are happening, it'll profile your data. Mm. So you activate on relevant um, items or you turn up the throttle and only to collect data when you really collect it because something's triggered that response. Mm. That's the way you move. So with any breach response, you have a few things. You have something bad is happening. Firstly, I need to stop the hurt. And what do I mean by that? It means I need to plug the gaps and stop everything getting out. Yeah. Yep. Contain, contain, contain. <laughs> so you will always want people checking from the outside to make sure things are stopped and you deploying something to make sure that nothing's firing up DNS and speaking out or we haven't got any massive talkers that are pumping out all about IP or something bad is happening. That can be done actually relatively quickly with the right technologies and the right approach. When you've honed and profiled your data sources down, then you may have to go through full forensic imaging. And then you have your logical, then you have full disk imaging. So there's a very much a workflow stage process that really makes the damage limitation on a business very, very small. And they'll have a gold bill build anyway if they're worth their salt. So you'll be able to get down and say, right, nothing's getting out. Business has stopped for the last 22 hours, but we're going to put these online because they're clean. You know, this is how it's going to work. We've gold bill our main servers, and we can step it through with any practice, but that's obviously what these guys do day in, day out. And I used to do many, many years ago. <laughs> Not for these guys, but... So, um, so uh, yes, uh, I used to be on PCI uh, investigations group in 2005, 2006, when, when we were doing all these big credit card breaches. So I have walked into a, uh, an ISP, and they've said, we've had a breach. And I said, okay. And they open a door to a warehouse and say, Here's two and a half thousand servers, <laughs> and each server holds 250 <laughs> websites. How did they get in? Seriously? And of course, back then it was, you know, I spent 150 days imaging drives. <laughs> now, where do you start? 150, just sat there in server room, <laughs> freezing cold, yeah. with a cardigan on, imaging my drives and making sure before I could even go and build it. Because... They wouldn't even run antivirus because they didn't want to slow down their web serving potential. It's the age old, you know, security versus functionality argument. And we go on day in, day out. But uh, anyway, you'll get me talking about this for hours. So we've probably got homes to go to eventually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's a really interesting uh, subject of how we're going to change our minds. And if you've watched Mr. Robot, have any of you seen Mr. Robot? Season one. <laughs> have you seen the start of season two? The very first episode, the first 15 minutes. Just watch it, because they compromise a smart home. I it. it's, it's, no, 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 it's irrelevant to the rest of the day. It's irrelevant. But what I'm saying is, it's the first 10 minutes where they show you, it's actually the opening five or 10 minutes uh, before it gets into why it's all that. But suddenly, the woman gets in, you know, and suddenly her air conditioning goes freezing cold, so she puts clothes on. Then her music starts playing, and Alexa wakes up, and her fridge goes crazy. Her kettle starts boiling, her swimming pool gets hot, her shower goes boiling hot, and it just yeah. shows you. And they basically compromise it so she leaves, uh -huh. so that the team can move into her house while she's getting it repaired. So yeah. that first few minutes... No, no, there's no... no, 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 no <laughs> that is completely... <laughs> it's completely irrelevant to the series. In the same way it was irrelevant at the beginning of series one when he caught the paedophile. Kind of irrelevant, but interesting. You know, and this is the same. Literally, the first five minutes is really quite cool. And that really explains everything we're talking about here today. The vulnerability. In it. Yeah, one logic controller. It just didn't work properly. Boom, you're in. All of it, you are. There you go. Hope that helped a little bit. If not, <laughs> it was some interesting conversation. If nothing else. Any other questions? <coughs> uh, I don't have any questions. Right, yeah. The internet of things will be a little bit key.
<laughs> for the next few years, like, especially like DDoS. Okay, when you can take down a company, you can take just hire a, a botnet to actually take down this company. So you can, you can demand a ransom for, for that kind of thing. So it, it will be somewhat the next ransom by someone in a way, by in a cyber shop. You don't even need to hack into the corporate network. You need to take, take it out and then the business will stop working. Yeah. So it will be the next big thing. So I investigated, um, so in, in, I don't know if it's so much here, but in the UK, horse racing, betting on horse racing is a big thing. Yeah, so we have the Grand National Day where it's um, millions and millions of pounds goes through the betting syndicate. So the Russians would contact William Hill mm. and say to them, mm. we'll give Hill you a is. test, watch this. Boom. They, need, they need to know who William Hill is. Yeah, I don't know. Right, so they are the better game, see. So if I put some money to put on a horse, yeah, I go to William Hill and I say, £10 on that horse winning. If it wins, I get my 1000 or I lose my £10. So obviously William Hill moved to the internet rather than go to the shop. Oh. Yeah. So William Hill's online, and the Russians gear up this botnet. Back then it was a zombie and master, and they send an email to William Hill saying, "On the biggest betting day, you need to pay us five million bucks. Otherwise, we will shut you down." <coughs> no, no, no. And they shut William Hill down. Boom, oh. completely. After that, William Hill paid them. Yeah. From there on, and oh, not only that, so it's old oh. crimes. It's old crimes. It's extortion. Yeah. It's what the mafia <laughs> used to do. It's just using new technologies and new ways of doing it. It's the same old crimes. Ideal business, recurring revenue. It's recurring <laughs> revenue. <laughs> and crypto yeah. lockers, the next variant. Really, have you been stopped or? Sorry. So how did they stop? Uh, the William Hill situation. Uh, they didn't. They lost out that year. The website went. Subsequently. Out. Subsequently, obviously, they've tried to do the technology of. You know, paying people to do the DDoS attacks, yeah. etc. But you know, they're clever, these people. They will take them. Yeah, they're there. on the payroll now. <laughs> but the issue, what I'm saying is, you're absolutely spot on. The fact is now, someone can liven up our unpatched cameras and take down a country. Um, That's insane. We were, we were even infiltrating the control network. Yeah, yep. so using your body. Yeah. It's insane. It's just how do I wake up 150,000 machines and say, all of you, talk now. Make a request. Clearly, it's possible because we've seen it now on three, three yeah. good occasions. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good point. It's a good point. But I, I, do you guys see this? So this this hacker recently he posted a news that he managed to hack into the the you know this this talk, talking fish. But they, 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 they have a lecture in, in it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, you might never know anything that can be hacked. So there is talking fish on, on a. So again, you might not know there's a AI that's actually listening to your conversation. So yeah. Yeah. So, so this talking fish, you can whatever you talk to it, you, uh, you respond. It's a so toy. It's a. It's a sea bass. Yeah, it's a sea bass. It's a fish oh, that's yeah, like, like you call it fly fishing, oh, oh, and it starts singing. It's so it's censored as you walk past. It sings. Oh, to you. So you never know. So you're going to copy that. Yeah. Inside a, a place, you never know who is listening to you as well. Oh. Well, my kids, yeah. I, I didn't realize, installed a skill on Alexa that it would do cats like meow meow. <laughs> so they walk past, and you can say meow meow, <laughs> and the cat starts going in Alexa. Yeah. But you see, that's another thing. My children have done that. Yeah. <laughs> who says that's not bad hacker number one who releases an app? Now they all seem to be coming out on force mm -hmm. that says, oh, here's an Alexa skill, download it from a website, and you can get Alexa to do dog barking. But actually, the minute you press install, yeah. Alexa's on. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going completely to the other end of paranormal. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, yeah. Who would think about compromising the singing fish? <laughs> Get some of the anything is possible. Anything. Is anything. Possible. Then we start talking about Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> so from an investigation point of view, if you come across something like this, where are you going to start? It's uh, mm. it's like a massive. Like where where do you start when you get? Well, I think as uh, what we touched on, I think you will start with the, the command and control mechanism, right? Where that's where you probably your first point of point, uh, point of investigation. So when the breach happened, yeah, yeah, assuming that it's a it's a set of devices that is managed by the command control. That's where you start the investigation. I mean, I I don't have an answer for this because I haven't done it yet. So, 
it's, it's and it's a, a tough one, right? So what yeah. would I do? I would say, what is my connectivity in and out of this environment? How do I communicate that client? Right, that's via my firewall, my router, via my phone signal. What are my ways out? Remember, I was talking about stop the hurt. Mm. Key bit, you get on site, stop the hurt. How is stuff getting out? When, it, when you work out how it's getting out, <coughs> then watch it. If you can watch it and you can bear to watch it, watch it. Because then you are going to get your command and control. 100%. Once you've got it, you've got your client and try to go, right, I can stop the hurt. I can mimic this off in a honey pot and let it think it's still talking happily. Great. You just keep talking mm -hmm. over here. Okay. But I will sort my own stuff out. Mm -hmm. Then you've got your data uh, collection, yeah. right? So forensically, you've got to secure what you can. Like I said earlier, I have no idea how to get into a fridge. All I do know is that it's storing something, mm -hmm. in which case it must be communicating and if I can, if I can basically jailbreak a fridge, like people can jailbreak a phone, it will give me access to the file system. I must be able to access it over the network and grab data. There's not going to be a massive amount of data, so it's understanding how I can then, once I've got the data, stop how I can secure it out and how I can get it and bring it into an environment where I can start doing your analytics and working out holy moly, what is all this I mean, stuff going on? I can picture it. I think it's a board. Um, could access, be accessing the SSD. Could be a chip off, off yeah, you know, like you do with your mobile phone. It, it is a really nice. Yeah. yeah. So well, I'm sure my wife would love me going in and taking our fridge apart <laughs> yeah. and playing yeah. with it. But uh, yeah, it's right. Uh, your, your TVs What's you like can turn yeah. into Linux servers now with a smart TV with a boot up <laughs> from a thumb drive. Then why not? <laughs> Happy days. So yeah, capturing that data, then you can correlate. You know, then you can correlate. And then you get the government or whoever's allowed to go and start tracking back these people yeah. and see what you can get out of it. But it's, I've never dealt with it. I've dealt with situations similar, but never this. You know, they've always been a PC or a web server or something, not a watch or whatever it might be. Even though obviously people are already doing data collections of watches now, mm -hmm. they're already getting there. And it won't, won't be long before people work out how to do it, I'm sure. Smarter people than I. Yeah. I think that's uh, very insightful.